So I want to talk to you about cortisol because I think it's just such a fascinating and important um, hormone. I'm showing you a picture here of both melatonin um, and cortisol because they are mirror hormones. When one is up, the other is down and vice versa. The black line is your cortisol level. So it likes to peak within about 30 minutes of waking up and um, and then um, it's, it peaks and then it gets down to its lowest levels around midnight. It's triggered by being stressed, by awakening. I mean, that's why we get that nice peak in the morning and that peak is actually really healthy. But anytime throughout the 24 hour day, it can also get um, triggered because of stress, because we eat sugar, because we haven't had enough sleep. And I wanna show you a couple of different cortisol patterns you could actually go get your cortisol levels measured. I'm not at all advocating for you to go and do that. I'm just saying it's possible. There are functional labs um, that will um, do salivary cortisol levels. They send you a kit, you put saliva in as a sample four times through the day, throughout the day. So you'll do one like uh, within 30 minutes of waking up, then a noon one, a mid-afternoon one, and one um, late in the evening. And we get a curve like this. And there's many different patterns, but I just wanted to show you three patterns. Okay. So here is a normal pattern. And if you fall within the green, that's good. That's like your optimal um, range. So you could see this person had a nice peak in the morning. And then uh, as they kind of, as the day wore on, cortisol levels came down to their lowest levels at midnight. And by the way, this first peak in the morning is called the cortisol awakening response, or we call it CAR, C-A-R. Super important. It's actually becoming more and more known as a uh, marker of health where people who are healthy tend to have a really nice spike. It's not too high and it's not too low, but it's a nice robust peak. And then as the day wears on, this decreases. Now, there can be a scenario where you check a patient's cortisol levels and you get elevations at any of the four um, times throughout the day. And it could be just one of them could be elevated or two or all of them could be elevated. And that kind of gives you clues as to what might be going on. So if somebody has like a mid-afternoon elevation, that makes me think about what's happening in the afternoon. Are they having a sugary snack? Is there something at work that's stressful? Maybe their kids just came home from school, you know, so you got to kind of be a little bit of a detective to try to try to figure out why is it that your levels are high? And then look, this person did not come back down around midnight. So again, what's happening? Are you watching the evening news? Like, are you paying your bills right before bed? Did you have a bedtime snack, like a piece of chocolate cake, right? So that's a high cortisol pattern. And then here's a low cortisol pattern. If you could kind of look and see, you know, these black dots, the black um, diamonds are below the uh, green um, normal range. And so this person's cortisol is not responding, okay? So I think of higher levels as um, your body's still able to respond to stress by putting out more cortisol. And this is what happens to people who are stressed, right? But there is also this scenario where you could be stressed so much for so long that your adrenal glands just kind of give up and you can't really respond to stress. And there's a name for this. We call it adrenal fatigue. If you ask your um, endocrinologist, they'll probably laugh and say there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue. But I think the reason is because in Western medicine, we don't have tools to deal with this pattern. What do you do? You're not going to give people cortisol. This isn't quite at the level where they're so deficient that they need steroid replacement. But we have a lot of tools to deal with this scenario in integrative and functional medicine. So that's why we, we've named it and we talk about it and we you know, talk about ways to manage it. So the, what I want you to take away from this is that the normal pattern is nice spike in the morning and then your lowest levels are um, at midnight. So there's this interesting um, paper I found where um, the... Uh, Cortisol levels were measured in people with multiple sclerosis, and there isn't one pattern with, with for cortisol with pe among people with MS. 
It could be high, it could be low, and it's very complex. There's many reasons why. And there is in the background, if you remember when I was showing the picture of all the glands in the body, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, there could be some um, abnormalities there that is not uncommon among people with MS and autoimmune diseases that can lead to these abnormal hormone levels. So what they found was people with MS had abnormal cortisol. It was either high or low. And people who had higher levels tended to, also, tended to also experience depression and anxiety. And people with low levels of um, uh, cortisol throughout the day not only had depression, but also had fatigue and urinary symptoms. So maybe this is a clue to you as far as maybe your cortisol levels aren't quite where we want them to be in that target green zone. And the other finding from this paper was that higher cortisol levels actually um, were associated with um, more uh, severe and progressive um, disease with MS. So uh, this is just something to think about. Now, I don't say this to, to stress you out or make you run out and go get a salivary cortisol test because um, I think there's many things we can do to normalize cortisol. And we're gonna talk about that here in a second. So um, I want to show you, like, before I do that, I want to show you one more study here that what they looked in re um, relapsing, remitting MS to see what was happening with the cortisol awakening response. Remember, I said this first um, spike in the morning um, is very much indicative of good health, um, but you know, you also don't want it to be too high. So people who had relapsing remitting MS and super high AM cortisol levels tend to have greater um, disability scores. So they're, they're, they scored on the EDSS higher compared to controls, okay? All right, so what's your cortisol pattern? People who tend to kind of go above that green zone and have cortisol that's high throughout the day may kind of feel a little bit agitated throughout the day. Weight gain, blood sugar can start creeping up. Um, osteoporosis can be something that gets accelerated. Uh, and also craving sweets, you know, are always looking for your next hit of sugar, um, trouble falling asleep at the beginning of the night. Oftentimes these people are very stressed um, and their cortisol levels are running high throughout the day. Here are some um, uh, symptoms of what low cortisol may look like. Fatigue, lots and lots of sleep, and you're still not quite relieving that fatigue chronic pain, fibromyalgia, um, craving salty foods. Um, these people are very delicate in that they can't really tolerate small stresses. Even like going from a sitting to standing position, they might really kind of get dizzy. You know, if, if everything's not taken away as it should, even maybe even in the background in the autonomic nervous system. They may also have fluctuations in blood sugar and body temperature. Now, you know, as with anything in medicine, nothing is black and white. You probably have symptoms from both columns and that's okay. But if you think one predominates more than the other, that might be a clue to you as what might be kind of happening in the background. So how do we balance cortisol? Okay, here's the big um, secret. I don't think that there's many um, supplements that are really helpful. And this is why I don't test for cortisol in patients, because if people come in and they're stressed and they've got a bunch of diagnoses and they don't feel good, their cortisol is probably not normal. So how do I deal with that? We put them through these steps that I'm going to share here with you, because this is the um, most uh, impactful way of balancing your cortisol. If it's too high, it'll help it bring it bring it down. If it's too low, it'll help bring it up. So remember what I said about stress kind of ra raising cortisol at every level throughout the day. Well, managing stress is super important with, with cortisol. So my, my approach always is remove the stressors if you can change your perception of the stressors and then for whatever stress is left over, build coping skills, whether it's mindfulness, meditation, exercise, whatever it is, you pick up a hobby just to kind of get you out of that, um, you know, stressed state, uh, limit sugar. I don't think anybody gets their sugar down to zero. So I try not to say cut out sugar, but bring it down as much as possible. Remember when you eat sugar, cortisol goes up, 
thyroid gets suppressed. Hopefully that's a picture that stays with you next time you're like, oh, that chocolate cake looks really good. Um, and then sleep is really important. In functional medicine, we say the best way to make a deposit in your adrenal bank account, remember adrenal glands secrete cortisol, the best way to do that is sleep. There's nothing like sleep that's gonna help out your hormone system. And then non-intense exercise. We, if you think your hormone system's a little touchy, don't go and do super strenuous exercise because that's going to further stress the hormone system. Like take it easy for a while until you feel strong enough to do higher intensity levels. So low intensity or moderate intensity would be a good fit. And then there are adaptogenic herbs. And I've put a picture of a few here. This is ashwagandha. It's a beautiful herb. And here is holy basil to the right. And adaptogenic herbs... Um, actually work with our adrenal glands. So they have an effect on the adrenal glands to help balance and normalize the release of cortisol. And um, what, what happens is uh, it's a gentle nudge to the adrenal glands to pick up making a, um, cortisol, um, you know, to deal with the stresses in the environment. So for, especially for people who have that, what we call adrenal fatigue, where all the levels for cortisol were low, um, this can help um, uh, normalize that. So it helps us adapt and cope with stress better. And it's a, there's a bunch of very complex mechanisms behind this that I just can't get into. Um, so the, there was a study um, that showed, uh, this was not in an MS population, but um, basically they use ashwagandha at either 250 milligrams or 600 milligrams a day. And what they found was um, people reported um, lower stress scores. So people didn't feel as stressed. Their measured cortisol levels were lower and sleep was improved, okay? Now, ashwagandha as an adaptogenic herb can help you if you have too much cortisol, just, you know, helps bring things down, but it's, it can also help when cortisol levels are low. So this is the beauty uh, and wisdom of, of plants. They work very physiologically with our bodies. You know, they don't have the, the same effect of drugs where they either move things up or down. You know, they just sort of fine tune things. And um, as far as supplements, if you wanted to make sure that you were doing what you could for cortisol, um, Taking first of all, making sure that you, you first have a good diet, but also if if you think there's some holes in your diet, taking a good multivitamin, multimineral. Um, a, the B vitamins are really important, really for everything, whether it's energy production, hormones, mood, immune function. So um, maybe a B complex could be helpful. Although I generally don't push these on patients a lot. I feel like again, if you can be on a whole foods plant based diet, you'll get the vitamins and minerals that you need. And then there's some data that um, stress, and especially like type A people who experience a lot of stress, that, that lowers magnesium levels, but magnesium can also lower cortisol. So for people who especially have trouble falling asleep at night, um, the magnesium is used to help calm things down, lower the cortisol to help you get better sleep. And then there's another supplement called phosphatidylserine that's used very much like magnesium. These are for people who get kind of amped up at night. Uh, and um, this is very calming. And it can also, um, there's reports that it can lower cortisol. The only uh, reports I found are, you know, where they've given either IV or oral um, phosphatidylserine to people who exercised. You know, it wasn't like people going about in their day to day. So, you know, there's not a lot of data here. Uh, I don't use it in my practice, but it is something that a lot of practitioners practitioners do use, but I think magnesium can be pretty helpful, especially when people have trouble sleep, falling asleep at the beginning of the night.